fine so whenever we have to take four outside okay so we'll just focus on the first two terms don't think of the last constant term okay you can keep it aside for time being so it will be x square plus 2x and then minus y is standing outside okay now let me keep some space here only because we have to write something over here okay now what should i write here so that this whole thing becomes a perfect square the bracket becomes perfect square Is it the square of four, sir? Okay. How do we think on that? Let us see that. Samuel, sir, doesn't you know? the square of four go outside the bracket, not inside the bracket? Uh, yeah, square of four outside the bracket will create problem. No, because we have to do like minus 16 or like plus 16 minus five and then no, get the answer in the end. Don't think like that. Right now, just forget about what is lying outside. Just focus in the bracket. And here, if I need to complete the square, what should be that number, which I should write over here? Okay, step by step, we will think. So this should be your first part. I have x square plus 2x. The formula is a square, a square plus 2ab plus b square. This is what we are trying to create, which is equivalent to a plus b whole square. Okay. So if you look at this term x square plus 2x, x square is same as a square. Try to compare the terms. Then I have 2a. The value of a is x only. So I am just rewriting it in the form of 2ab. Here it will be 1 so that when I will multiply, I'll get the same term 2x. So in doing that, I at least got the value of b. My b value, when I will compare with the formula, it will be 1. So I have to add 1 square. Now, since it is done in bracket, okay, please try to understand this. And 4 is lying outside. So you are actually doing 4 times 1. So you did plus 4. So to neutralize the effect of that, you have to do minus 4. So that minus 4 you can write outside and then minus 5 was already there. This is how we will move forward from here. So if there is any doubt in understanding this step, you guys can ask. I can explain again. So did you get the minus 4 from just like seeing the 4 and just changing the sign? That's it. Minus sign what? Say again. The minus 4, is it just 4 but like reversed just to get rid of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, okay. when we are trying to complete the square, we have to do these steps like, let's say if I have x square plus 2x, now I added 1 over here. So this 1 was added by my side. It was not there. So I have to add, I have to subtract minus 1 also. So mathematically, you have done nothing. But just to rewrite it in some other form, you have added 1 so that it can be written as x plus 1 whole square minus 1. So whenever we are adding something, we have to create its counter. Now in such question, what is the challenge that there is something lying outside also? So Samuel, I think that point is clear that it will not be a 4 square. Okay, it will be just 1 square. So effectively, we are just doing 4 times 1. So I have added 4, so I have to subtract 4, which is written outside, and then that's it. After that, we can very easily move ahead. Is this step clear to both of you? Yes, sir. Okay, so try to move forward from here and try to get means try to compress it in the form of a plus b whole square.
Okay, I'm waiting for the next step. Can anyone tell me what will be the next step? Yes, sir. So A is four, and whatever's in the bracket is like that's the x plus b square part, but expanded. So can we write like this? A square plus two AB plus B square can be written as A plus B whole square. Yeah. Then and minus then minus nine. Minus five will be minus nine. Okay. And now we are going to compare it with A x plus B whole square plus C. Yeah. I compare it doesn't have to be a plus, right? Huh. It it doesn't have to be plus. It can be minus also because they're saying A, B, C are the integers to be found. Integers okay. can be positive, negative, both. So A will be 4, B will be 1, and C will be minus 9. So is it clear to both? It's so clear. can you just explain from the second step onwards? This one? This step? Yeah, just from there. Can you just repeat it? Okay, so it will be better if we do one more example first. Okay, so just hold on. I'll, I'll just... So what should be our first thought? Our first thought should be that whether whether it will become a plus b whole square or a minus b whole square. Okay, what I mean to say is that if I write a plus b whole square, that will be a square plus 2ab plus b square. If I write a minus b whole square, then it will be a square minus 2ab plus b square. Okay. So the sign, if you check, the sign of middle term decides whether it will be a plus b whole square or a minus b whole square. First, both of you tell me that is this thing clear? This is yes, the thought which should come in your mind that which one should I use? Samuel, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the next step which should come in your mind is that let us try to make that perfect square. Okay. So for that, we usually take the first two terms only. The last term will be readjusted later. From the first two terms, I'll just write it down as a square plus 2a. Now what should I write over here so that I get 2x only? Sir, what do the One. dots mean? Dots means the dots are like multiplication. Okay. Yes, what sir. Uh, we should write one, sir. We should write one. Okay. Now, why it is written like this? So that we can compare it with a square plus 2ab plus b square. Okay. You need not put the dot. That was just to create difference. Okay. So that is not compulsory that you have to put dot. But the point is, it will be 1. That should be clear. Is that clear, both of you? Yes, sir. Now, in doing that, I actually got the value of b. Now, since I have to complete the square, so my formula says that I need b square also. All the story like this should go in your mind when you are solving a question. I will create one square. Now, one square is 1 only. Since I have created this on my own, I have to create its counter. So, it will be minus one square. Okay. Intentionally, I'm writing one square because if it is some other number also, no, you have to write like this only. One square will be one only. So you can also write one in this case, plus seven as it is. Now it is time to recombine the terms. So I have a square plus two ab plus b squared together, which will be compressed. And these terms will be readjusted. So when I will compress it, it will be written as a x plus 1 whole square and then minus 1 plus 7. It will be 7 minus 1, that is plus 6. So I got this. Okay, now it is fairly in that form which they are asking. So is it clear? Yes, sir. Send yes, sir, understood. Now, try to recall quadratic graphs. And in the quadratic graphs, there were two things which we have to use over here. The first thing is that, is it a case of, means is it an upward parabola or downward parabola? How do we decide that? Whether a parabola will be upward parabola or downward parabola? 
those six cases. If it's positive or negative, right? What positive? The A thing. Yeah, so which A we are talking about? This A? Or that A was only symbolically the coefficient of X square? What was that? Coefficient of X square, I think. Yeah, okay, so you have to remember like this, that that A was coefficient of X square, and if it is positive, it is sure that this will be an upward parabola. Okay, now one more thing while discussing the graphs I told you, that if it is an upward parabola, this will always have a minimum value. It cannot have a maximum value because maximum it will go forever. Similarly, if it is a downward parabola, it will always have a maximum value. It cannot have a minimum value. Reason is same. Is that thing clear? Yes, yeah, sir. So if a question comes that write down the minimum value for this, how will you write? Use your common sense. You guys know how to find the vertex. So you just need to connect that thing with minimum or maximum value. That is a hint. So will it be like X is greater than or lesser than? Will it be that type of thing? No. Okay, then I'm not sure. So what it be like if the number, like if we solve for X and if it's negative, it's um, a positive, what would be something like that? No, it will not be from inequality. So I think you guys are not clear with the question only. Look, this is the vertex value and this is of the type X comma Y. Okay, I need to find this. I'll use the previous example and previous example is y is equal to x plus 1 whole square plus 6. Okay, now just try to understand that what is the meaning of vertex. Vertex will be obtained when you will put this x plus 1, this x plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. Why we have to use this completing the square? The ultimate aim for completing the square method is that you should be able to find the vertex of the parabola. Okay, I'll tell you that why vertex is important to get minimum maximum value. So whatever factor we get like this, in all the questions we'll get a factor like this. When we are using completing the square, we have to equate it to zero and that will give me an X value, a certain X value. Now this x value, when it is reinserted in this equation, minus one plus one will be zero. I will get y value as six. Just look at the equation and think about it. Y value is equal to six is acceptable for both of you? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, so this thing will become my vertex. It is always like this. Okay, minus 1 comma 6 for this example will be the vertex. Now coming to the minimum value. When I say minimum value, value of a function is always y. We are talking about y. Okay, so in this minimum value, the vertex is itself the minimum coordinate. I can say that it is a coordinate of the minimum value. So in the vertex itself, the y coordinate will be your minimum value of a function or of a quadratic. So now onwards, please fix that in your mind that when we say value of a function, we are talking about y. Okay, value of a function means y. Now when they say minimum value, so we need to work with the vertex. Now why this vertex is minimum? Because this is an upward parabola. If they say find maximum value, we'll say it is not possible. Okay, you can find maximum value in the same manner only for a downward parabola. So the question itself will ask you the same thing if it is a downward parabola. Okay, so for this case, the minimum value is 6. Okay, more or less, it is the same vertex which we have found, but now we are using it. What is the vertex? Vertex is the coordinate of the extremum. Extremum means the minimum or maximum value. 
depending upon which parabola we are dealing. Okay, sir. So, if this thing is clear, are you guys ready for one more similar type of question? Yeah, I think so, sir. Okay. Hopefully, there is no doubt in completing the square now. Yes, yeah, so no doubt. Okay. So, let me give you one question. Okay. It will be exactly similar type of question what we have been looking for in last two, three questions. So, 9x square plus 36x minus 5. Okay. You need to write it down in the form of a x plus b whole square plus c. Okay. And then you need to find the minimum value of this parabola. The question will be minimum because at least by looking at the question, you should get a feel that it is an upward parabola. 9 is positive. Okay. If it would have been negative, then the question would automatically be changed to maximum value. Okay. Try. Okay. Let us see this question once again. Okay. So I'm just removing all annotations and I'm hoping that you guys can very easily manage this question now. Okay. Just try to do it. Be quick. And if first part is done, you can just read the second part also. Write down the minimum point on the graph. It is same. Okay, let us tweak this question a bit because you have already seen plus. I want you guys to do with minus. Okay, we have done a lot of questions for plus. The only difference in minus is that you are going to create a minus b whole square later on. Okay, the formula was already told there will be only one difference. The middle term will have a negative sign. Okay, try the same question with 4x square minus 8x minus 5. Are you getting, if you take 4 common from both the terms, then it will be x square minus 2x because when let's say 4 is going back, you should get 8x only. If you will write 4x and 4, 4s are will become 16. Was that clear what I said? Uh, yes, sir. So x square minus 4, 2x and then minus 5 and now we need to complete the square over here so more or less the logic will be same what we discussed in other examples so it will be 4 times of x square minus 2x plus 1, plus 1 means effectively it will be 4 times 1. You can also write it down as 1 square, okay, optional. So it will be minus 4 outside, minus 5. So that will be 4 times of x minus 1 whole square minus 9. So by doing this, we got the value of a as 4, b will be minus 1, and c will be minus 9. Okay, that's it. This is what we have to do in first part of the question.
So is it done? Yes, yeah, sir. I got the same answer. Okay. And Samuel? Uh, yeah, sir. I understand. I did it also. So, so is X uh, 1? Yeah, X will be 1. X and will Y be is nine. Nine, minus nine. Negative 9. Yes. So, 1, comma, negative 9 is the coordinate of the vertex. Okay. It is the coordinate of the vertex of parabola. Now, this vertex itself will have a minimum value, which is the y coordinate. Okay. It should be clear in your head like this. So, they are saying write down the minimum point on the graph. Now, they are not asking minimum value. Okay. Read the question carefully. Minimum point. Minimum point will be vertex and answer will be 1, comma minus 9. Okay. If this point is cancelled and it is written as value, then your answer will be only minus 9. Okay. And the last part is sketch the graph clearly labeling the minimum point and any other point where graph intersects the coordinate axis. Okay. Now this is interesting. We have seen all six cases and I am realizing that you guys have forgotten all six cases. So try to recall your memory, whatever is coming and try to make the graph. Okay. Making a graph doesn't mean that you have to actually draw it and measure it. You should be able to draw it roughly. Okay. So not an actual graph is needed even in exam. So what are the things we have to consider while talking about the graph? First thing is definitely vertex. Next thing is whether it is an upward parabola or downward parabola. Okay, whether it is an upward parabola or downward parabola. The next point which we have to consider is that whether this graph is intersecting x-axis or I'll just write intersections at x and y axis. Now intersections at x-axis means you need to find the roots of the quadratic equation by factorizing or by using formula method. But when I say y-axis intercept, so for that you have to just put x is equal to zero and get y value. That will be the y-axis intercept. Okay, so this is like the whole dissection x-ray of the whole question means these are the things which should be clear in your mind then only you'll be able to draw the graph and drawing graph does not take more than a minute if you are clear with everything okay i'll show you by applying each and everything you have to just watch i'll give you one more question to try okay first thing is it is an upward parabola we have already observed vertex is one comma negative nine okay if I get the y-axis intercept, I have to put x is equal to 0 in this. So y-axis intercept is negative 5. So this graph is intersecting y-axis at negative 5. Okay. Now, if it is intersecting y-axis at negative 5, let us use our common sense. 1, comma negative 9, let's say tentatively this point is over here. Okay. So the graph will be like this only, no? It will be like this. Because this is the vertex. Okay. So the graph will be like this. So yes, automatically sir. you can see that this is 1, comma minus 9. This is 0, comma minus 5. Okay. How I got minus 5? I have to just put x is equal to 0. That is the y-axis intercept. And I just need to find these two, which you have learned in your lower grades. These are the roots of a quadratic equation. So whichever method you want to go with, you can try that and you can get the X values, put them over here and then the graph will be completed. Nothing else is needed to make a graph. Okay. And you can draw a graph like this in your exam also.
the only thing is you have to label it properly label all roots y intercept in the vertex okay sir okay so the procedure is clear this question was just to make you understand the procedure okay if you want you can write down these points these are very important points whenever you have to draw a graph you have to look for these only so now if there is any doubt anywhere you can ask or else we'll move on to one more question where you have to draw the graph now. Please watch this part of the lecture specifically, okay? I'll just tell each and everything again. So A is nine, which is greater than zero. It confirms that it will be an upward parabola. Then if I put x is equal to 0, that will give me y is equal to negative 5. So this is y axis intercept, meaning y axis intercept means this graph will cut y axis at negative 5. It will pass through y axis at negative 5. Okay, then comes the vertex. Vertex of this graph is negative 2 comma negative 41. Okay, so vertex is what? Vertex is the, for this case, it will be the minimum point. Okay, for this case, it can be the maximum point also if it is an upward parabola. So at least these three things should be clear. After that, we have to find the roots also. So for finding the roots, it is not necessary that you have to use factorization you can use formula method also so that i am leaving on you to get the two values of x why we have to get two values of x because this is what we are going to plot on the graph okay now collecting all the facts i'll draw the graph just have a look at the graph now in the graph first thing is that it is an upward parabola okay y axis intercept is negative five and this is the vertex. Let me start with the vertex. So tentatively negative 2 comma negative 41. Now negative 41 is way down. So you can even take a scale of 5. It doesn't matter. Okay. You can even take a scale of 5, 5. So this is just a rough graph. So it need not be exactly negative 41. Okay. So this is a point negative 2 comma negative 41. Now it is intersecting y axis at negative 5. So y axis intercept, let's say this is negative 5. So the graph will be somewhat like this. Okay. It will pass through the y axis at negative 5. So this will be 0, comma negative 5. All I need to find is these two x values, which I can get using quadratic formula. Okay, and my graph will be done. So is it clear now? This will be yes, sir. Can you check the photo I sent you? Yeah, I'll just check it out. This is y axis intercept, and these will be two roots. So I got everything. I just got the x axis wrong. So First thing is that we always take minus sign common and I will write it down like this minus of x square plus 6x and this plus 4 is actually of no use for us when we are talking about completing the square so it is written as it is. The sign of 4 is plus so that is why it is written as plus 4. Please be very clear with this. Whatever is the sign we say, na, it is always a sign which is before the number. Means over here. If there is nothing, we call it as plus by default. Okay. So from the terms, my main intent is that I want to create positive sign for x square term. So for that only I took negative sign common. So in the bracket, you can see it is now all positive. So that I can work in the same manner as we used to do for earlier questions. Now over here, minus one will be there as it is. A square plus two AB plus B square is my next target. 
So I will just rewrite it as x square plus 2 times x times. What should I write over here to get the b value? 3. 3. Very good. So I got the b value. I will create 3 square. Now effectively I have not created 3 square. I have created minus 3 square. Because minus sign is also lying outside. Okay. So the counter of minus 3 square will be plus 3 square plus 4 as it is. Next step will be same as our earlier questions, x plus 3 whole square, and this will be 9 plus 4, 13. Okay. Now from here, we'll do the same thing, exactly same thing. I will just put x plus 3 as 0. So that will give me x is equal to minus 3. If I put it back, I will get y is equal to 13. I got the vertex as minus 3 comma 13. Same. Okay. Then when I talk about y axis intercept for that, I have to put x is equal to 0. If I put x is equal to 0, I will get y is equal to 4. Okay. And then I have to graph it. So to graph this, I know that this is a negative. The coefficient of x square is negative. So this is going to be a downward parabola. So a downward parabola with vertex negative 3 comma 13. Negative 3 comma 13 will be somewhere over here. Negative 3 and 13 will be over here. Okay, so and y-axis intercept is 4. So means it will cut the y-axis at 4 like this. Okay, and the parabola will be like this. Okay, it is intersecting x-axis at two points that we have to find using formula method that I'm not finding because I'm assuming that you guys know how to solve quadratic equation by using formula method. Okay, so this will be minus 3 comma 13. This is 0 comma 4 and these two x values we have to find and this is the graph. Okay, so just have a look at everything and if there's any doubt in any step, you can ask.